between running the business bootstrap, COVID, you name it. Yeah. Like it was rough. Like for, for any entrepreneurs, I needed a break. And the way my co-founder and I kind of came up with the idea was we were hiking in Griffith. And by the time I left, she had texted me, let's build something. And I said, all right, let's do <laughs> it. I love those it. friends. You can't go on a hike with some people without <laughs> no, knowing you're like, <laughs> Never do I just want a, a new hike. business right now? <laughs> we like had the concept, had the idea. We went out for VC funding the week Silicon Valley Bank collapsed. If you're not thinking about bringing in money to help you really scale, you're not serious about scaling. When it comes to venture capital specifically, early stage no longer exists. You're like, do you have two million in revenue? And you're like, that's early stage. Yeah, yeah. That's that's when. When. yeah. There's this misconception that like I need venture to be successful, and you don't. When would someone know that it is the right time to consider taking outside money in terms of helping them grow? So the way I think about it is. Jacqueline, welcome to the shows. You're actually on two shows today. <laughs> How show. efficient of us. This is very <laughs> us. This is perfect. Earn Your Happy and Powerhouse Women. And we actually had you booked separately back to back. And Lindsay and I were like, what are we doing? Why don't we just interview her together? Not only for her sanity, but we also really love a, a good threesome. A, Listen, girl, a good girlfriend <laughs> Girls moment. night. Let's do it. I'm exactly. so excited. I, I thrive in this uh, this energy. So we I'm figured. So we figured it would be like, it was a surprise to her when she walked in. We're like, you're actually going to do a, a double here. I hope you're good with that. I'm in. Um, I'm so excited to talk to you again. You've been on the show a couple times, yeah. maybe three. I don't yeah. know. It's, I was like, when was the last time? Probably a long time ago. It's been now. a bit. I think yeah. so. Which there's been so much that has happened mm. since I have last had you on the show. And Same, I know, yeah. Yeah, for Lindsay as well. If you could just give us a little update, and we're going to dive into all of them, but give us an update on where you're at currently right now, what you're working on, what you're most excited about. Yeah, so currently right now, I mean, there's so much to unpack mm -hmm. in terms of like what has happened, but I am co-founding a company called Cherub. Cherub is basically what we're jokingly calling Raya for deal flow. It's I love it. Thanks. It's a dating app for angel investors mm. and entrepreneurs. And really what we're doing is we're in the business of warm intros. Mm. So when you're raising capital, as you know, and you're going out for your friends and family round, it's a lot of sliding into DMs, messages on mm -hmm. LinkedIn, cold emails that frankly oftentimes get unanswered or are uncomfortable yes. or whatever. Maybe one hits. Um, and the reality is, is for the fundraising process, it takes 27 months, costs on average $13,000, and it's a less than 10% pitch to close rate. This it feels is, accurate. It's a thankless, <laughs> right, it's a yeah. thankless situation. And when you think wow. about underrepresented founders, I mean, the stats are even worse. Mm. So when it came to Cherub, we were basically saying like, okay, I know amazing angel investors. I know you've mm. raised money from angel investors. There is this group of people willing and ready to invest in entrepreneurs. And the reality is, is only 3%, less than 3% of accredited angel investors actually invest. Mm. And our view is that we don't think that's because they're not interested. We think it's because yeah. they're not getting deal flow. Totally. And so we tested this mm. theory last year um, and had a thousand people sign up to be part mm. of it. And over a million dollars was deployed to different brands through chair Whoa. introductions. So we were like, I think this works. Um, mm. I think this is a problem we can solve. And so we are launching our beta in March of this year. And basically think of it as a dating app. You go mm -hmm. on, you talk about your company and you say, I'm looking for investors that have exited businesses that are women that are located in California, whatever. And then we match you with the best investors. And on the investor slide, you can say, I'm interested in female founded companies or CPG brands or AI, and we'll match you with those companies. And so you'll get uh, fed your highest percentage matches. So that's Cherubs. I've been working wow. on that for over a year, which is very exciting. Also bought back, create and cultivate. So in 2021, I get all post 2020. So I know it's just a blur. blur. It's, it's a blur. Such a blur. Um, in 2021, um, I sold a majority stake of the company mm -hmm. to private equity. Shortly after that, I stepped down as CEO um, and then really kind of took a step, a big step back from the company. Um, I was on the board and obviously hosting the podcast and was at events, but day to day running the business was not part of it at mm -hmm. all, which was interesting. I think yeah. much needed on my end. You know, I'd been running that company for 10 plus years, mm -hmm. like running myself into the ground really and like took a moment to step back and reflect went through a lot of personal and professional changes so I ended up getting a divorce mm. um you know which happens which is all good it's all like I only just put that together recently yeah 
<laughs> no, people are very confused okay. still. Um, and it's fine. We're friends. It, it, you know, it was a 10 year run, very successful. Mm-hmm. It was like kind of, it was like the business and the marriage, mm-hmm. you know, but it really was. It was a personal and professional kind of mm-hmm. identity crisis where you're like, wait, I've been married for 10 years. I'm no longer married. I've been the CEO of Crate and Cold Day for 10 That's years. Hot. I'm no longer the CEO. Which is weird, right? Yeah. And, it, and it's kind of a weird path to navigate, but I actually really enjoyed taking a couple years off and obviously mm-hmm. doing projects like Cherub and investing and coaching, but waking up and not having 4,000 emails and just kind of gardening and cooking and figuring out like, you know, what my next step would be. And I realized in doing that um, and kind of getting back into the mix, like I really missed it, but I wasn't you know, dying or clamoring to get back into it. Obviously, you know, at that point, it was run by private equity, the whole big, you know, thing behind it. And basically, end of last year, so 2023, um, an opportunity came about to uh, sell the company. And for whatever reason, like I was in that meeting and said, I want, I want to put my hat in the ring. Wow. Um, and I didn't even, like, I hung up and I was like, what did I, was I just say, do? Was, that was, that was like know. one of those things no, you blurt out no and way. it catches up it afterwards. Ca- afterwards. And I like kind of panicked, obviously, wow. as you do. And um, was basically like, you know, I, I, do, I know I can't do this on my own. I had started the Blueprint Mastermind with Marina Middleton and Ali Webb. Um, and Marina and I had had a great working relationship, very different like styles and whatever. But I called her after and I said, this is insane. <laughs> I just want to preface this, but like, I'm thinking about doing this. Like, would you want to be a part of it in any way, shape or form? Uh-huh. And she was like, I'm all in, let's go. And the next thing we knew, we had, you know, a, a million lawyers later, but, um, mm. you know, we had closed the deal and like gotten the company back. And so wow. now we're creating Cultivate 3.0, I guess, which is so exciting. Whoa. Wow. Okay. I, there's so many elements of this. I can't wait to dive more into since we're on that topic of events and like that you set the tone like you were the pioneer in this industry what has you excited about getting back into an events based business or is create and cultivate going to evolve and not just be events the way we know it now yeah oh i love that question so yeah when you know when i started there was like no one knew what a flower wall was right yeah. like, it was like not a thing <laughs> right. and now cut to there's like so many amazing events mm-hmm. and so many cool things so that that means a lot that you said yeah. that so thank you but yeah so it's interesting because like one of the things i really loved was twofold was one you know doing the blueprint mastermind i got to meet all these women um that were kind of they weren't the create and cultivate girly, but they were, but they were like doing five to 10, 15 million in revenue in their businesses. So a little bit more graduated in that way. And it was, I had such an amazing time like doing that mastermind and, and learning. And what I realized was we hadn't caught up to the consumer. You know, when I started Create and Cultivate, I was like blood, sweat and tears producing those events, building my business and like really was alongside our girls. And now, you know, what I realized is, is like taking a step back, like we're coming back and looking at the life stages of entrepreneurship. Mm. So I'm clearly at, I'm like I'm at the tail end of mine in a lot of ways. Right. Like I've built companies, I've sold companies, I've yeah. invested in companies, mm-hmm. I've bought back companies. So I've had this like whirlwind experience as an entrepreneur, you know, 15 plus years in the making. So you know, the, going to Crane Cultivate as I'm launching my business is so different than where I'm yes. at now. So the programming that we're going to roll out, and it is going to be very event heavy, mm-hmm. um, is going to be specific to the life stages of the on- entrepreneur and what we're calling from launch to legacy. And so that's really going to be the focus because mm-hmm. I think like Crate and Cultivate, the magic of it is the community, right? And everyone gets to come together. But when it first started, it was like kind of the beginning of women starting businesses because this is like 2011. You know, I mean, Mm -hmm. obviously women have been starting businesses forever, but like that movement was really around them. We've come so far. So much has happened. But like now it's time to kind of catch up to that narrative. So back in events, experiential, 100 percent. So that's our real focus. We're going to summer of 2025 launch uh what we're calling coachella for career women Mm, amazing so fun it's exciting so it's gonna be the largest festival for ambitious women um it's gonna be here in los angeles and it's gonna be multi-day musical performances panels workshops one-on-one meetings like all sorts of craziness um so yeah we're like well let's go balls to the wall literally (laughs) can't wait i literally can't wait i'm thinking (laughs) of my outfit already (laughs) i picture you in your garden just having that moment where you like put your the hoe in the ground <laughs> totally. and you're like I'm going back I'm going, going back. back I just grab like my little dog and like get in my car and hit the road the truly <laughs> totally. like legally blonde style yeah exactly oh. exactly like it's, it's hard. so exciting yeah. it's cool to hear how and, and I'd love for you to talk a little bit more about that like the value of taking that step back 
away from your business, whether that's someone who wants to follow in your footsteps and step completely away or just what did that season teach you Mm -hmm. when you were able to now come back with a fresh perspective? It was so eye opening. Mm-hmm. I think I had always been even before Create and Cultivate, I'd run my first business. So I've been, you know, knee deep in entrepreneurship, which is all consuming, as we all know. And in a good way, too, right? Like you're, you're having so much fun. Mm-hmm. You're, you go to dinner. You, it's work. You you wake up, you're emailing. It's work. You're on stage. It's work like but it's exciting and mm-hmm. you're building it and you're and you're doing all those things. After selling the company, it's like I had done the thing that I had set out to do. Like, and, you know, I had that moment and I kind of like when I took a step back, I think like one, it was like washed over me everything I had done, which I feel like a lot of entrepreneurs Mm. don't do. Like you don't celebrate your successes and wins or really pause because you're just like, okay, what's next? Yeah. Um, So that was a really nice feeling where I felt really good in that sense. But I also felt like a massive hole. You know, it's so odd, especially because I think, and it was very different than selling my first company, which was a marketing agency. This was a community. So it's like you yes. kind of walk away from a community, which is a we- which I wasn't yeah. prepared for. And two is like the reality of everyone still thinks you run the company. Mm. So it was kind of this constant thing of like, you know, letting it go and putting it in the hands of really smart, capable people and and, you know, kind of taking a step back and realizing like this isn't mine anymore. And then meanwhile, everyone being like, I didn't love that social post you were like messaging you. So you're still like getting it. Yes. Which is kind of a weird, it's a weird feeling. Um, or like I I just applied for this job and it's like, ah, yeah, I'm not the per- you know, but like <laughs> yeah. but I also felt sad about that, mm, you yeah. know, like because I also felt so tied to the brand. But what I took away from that moment was like, who am I outside of all of this? Mm. And like, what do I like? What do I enjoy? And how do I get back to like taking care of myself? And so I really spent a ton of time. And like, you guys will appreciate this. I remember the first time I went to like the grocery store on like a Tuesday at 1 p.m. And it felt like an out of body experience. Like I was like, I'm just nonchalantly shopping like at Tuesday spa? at 1. Luxury? I'm not back to back on calls. <laughs> yeah. Like what? Mm-hmm. Like no one cares where I am or what I'm doing. Like mm-hmm. this is so exciting. Like, And I truly like was just like, I'm going to make a home cooked lunch for two hours, you know, like, wow, and it was, so good. I started drinking mm-hmm. at four. Like, listen, I was like, I was in the in the hot tub. I was like, have an amazing time. <laughs> yeah. And like, obviously reconnecting like, what do I like? What, yeah. you know, what do I bring to the table? Like, mm-hmm. how am I thinking about it? But I also realized like, I wasn't done, mm. but I wasn't sure what was next. Cause mm-hmm. I was kind of like, how do I top that? Like, mm. that was it. You know, it was so amazing. And, um, you know, I loved it so much. I was definitely burnt to a crisp when we sold it, you know, between running the business bootstrap, COVID, you name it. Like, yeah. it was rough, like for, for any entrepreneurs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So I was like, I need to, I needed a break. Um, but I always like, you know, when people say like, take time off, don't quit or that saying, you yes. know, where it's like, I think it's so true. It's like, actually just give yourself a break. Um, and that can look a million different ways, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. So what were some of the things that came through for you when you were asking those questions? Like, who am I? What do I like? How would I, you know, what would the next thing be? Like, what were some of the answers that came? Because I know there's like hundreds that came, but what was the through line? That yeah, was- totally. Um, I love events. Like I love hosting events. I love experiences. Mm-hmm. I love thinking through like the moment someone arrives. So they leave, like, what does that look like? I love programming speakers, obviously like mm-hmm. pulling together the right people and the right panels have the right chemistry. I love all of that stuff. And I, and I, I knew that, um, the other thing that opened up for me was I joined intro. So I don't know if you know that app. Yeah, okay. Totally. So mm-hmm. it's an app where you can like book different experts. And so I joined it and got, I did over that year, I think I did 150 intro calls. Wow. You learned a lot. Yeah. And, but I also loved talking to people Mm. and basically what started to happen is everyone's like do you coach and I was like yeah I don't think so (laughs) I don't know I was like I I can talk to you about this stuff and like help provide ideas and solutions so I kind of got like in this world of like working one-on-one with business Mm. owners and I loved that I was like I was it Mm. feels like not work to me I I enjoy it so much and so kind of doing that I kind of got back into the mix and like started having those conversations and then the the mastermind fell into my lap a little bit so I got to flex my like event planning muscle a little bit combine like the coaching stuff with it and I was like oh this feels good like Mm. this feels right um and so you know we've only done one of those we have our second one um coming up in April but I was like this feels like this community is so amazing and being able to also see something at a smaller scale was yeah. really different for me. Everything mm-hmm. we've done minimum is like 500 people. Yeah. So getting to sit there with people who you get to hear their stories, what has changed, like what they've learned, how they've, you know, and you, I know 
all of them by name and all of their businesses and everything. But like, that, I've never experienced that with Create yeah. and Cultivate. It's always just like, hi, thanks for coming. You know, like chaos. Yes. Yeah. Totally. So it was such a good feeling. And so that to me, like reinvigorated me. And then, of course, like when this fell into my lap, I was like, I think we can combine both of these things mm -hmm. in a really meaningful way. Mm hmm. You are such a genius also at, and, and I'm thinking even back to probably before the sale, I don't know the timing of it, but you've always been an investor. You're really passionate about helping women find funding, but being able to integrate the two as almost like this holistic system that supports supports itself. So having founders speak at the events that then you're also involved in those businesses, like you actually have like one of the most brilliant minds for thinking about the whole ecosystem. So how do you think about that? I for mean, someone who's listening, <laughs> like, because there's such natural, I think there's a lot of ways, here's where I'm going with this, that all of us could expand upon our impact and just have like even more of a, an ecosystem yeah. than the one singular vertical that we're currently focusing on. And I feel like you have done that whether it's intentional or not. Mm -hmm. I'm like, listen, there's a master plan. No, it's not yeah, intentional. Exactly. At all. But <laughs> I think like one of the things that kept coming up and that I is I think is the through line for what I've what I do is that I help underrepresented founders, whether that's get funding, mm -hmm. find the tools and you know tips and tricks they need to succeed, find a community, whatever it is, like that is the through line of every single thing mm -hmm. I've done. You know, with create and cultivate community access, opportunity, obviously education, you know, all of right. those things with cherub fundraising, um, with the nonprofit I'm on the board of, specifically talking openly about founder depression. You know, I'm mm. always trying to help in that way and. The way I think about it and the way every business I've ever started has come about is this is a problem that needs a solution. And I think that's really important when you're starting a company because Crate and Cultivate started because I my first company was <laughs> a nightmare. I was running it, making a ton of mistakes, like completely messing up as a first time entrepreneur. I was like 23 and I went online and there was nothing online mm -hmm. for female founders. No, There was no uh, content. There was no events. And yep. there, you know, anything was for corporate at that time. Mm -hmm. So I was like, this is an issue. Let's solve it. And I didn't set out like, here's my business plan. Mm. I just thought like, let me throw something together and see if people care. Yeah. Um, same thing with Jareb. Like we were like, there has to be a solution for this. Like, mm -hmm. why aren't angel investors getting an opportunity? And the way my co-founder and I kind of came up with the idea was we were hiking in Griffith. I had gotten an email uh, about an angel investment that I thought she could be interested in. And I said, hey, um, I we're going to add you to this uh, email. It's going to forward along if you're interested in angel investing. I thought it could be cool. And she's like, yeah, send me stuff. Like mm. she's had an amazing exit. She went from um, a YP backed company acquisition to IPO. Crazy story. Um, and she's like, you know, I have like I can write checks and mm. I'm also valuable. I'm a product engineer, like engineering type person. So I can provide a lot of value. Mm -hmm. But like no one knows who I am. Mm. No one's going to put me on the chain. No one's sliding into my right. DMs. Yeah. And I was like, that's so interesting. Totally. Like, I wonder how many yous there are out mm. there and what we're calling quiet angels. The angels who are well known, the Ali Webbs, the Candace yeah. Nelsons, you mm -hmm. know, whatever, they get all the deal flow because everyone knows they're writing checks because they're public and promoting it and they have followers and all those things. Right. But there's so much more out there that is beyond Silicon Valley, that is beyond the influencers you see that have real value and can write checks. And literally we left. I was like, so I'll forward it to you when I get back. And by the time I left, she had texted me, let's build something. And wow. I said, all right, let's do it. I love those it. friends. And I know this is, I mean, this is what it is, right? You like, can't go on a hike with some people without no, knowing no, you're like, do I'm starting a business? Never do I just a hike. business right now? <laughs> <laughs> exactly, exactly. So yeah, it, it really is like this, you know, it is become an ecosystem where I'm hopeful that like, you know, my lasting impact, like I said, from launch to legacy. And like, it's something I've been thinking about that I'm like, what do I want people to say about me when I'm not in the room? Room. Like, what do you want people to say about you when you do retire? Like, what did she do? And I'm hopeful that it's, yeah. you know, exactly what you said. Yeah. <laughs> I'll say it to your face for perfect, now. Perfect. Perfect. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you work with so many different women. And I, I know that one of the main reasons why we don't go for things is obviously fear. Mm. I feel like with you, you've always been such a person who can just like you think of something and you want to make it happen. What part of your brain, like how have you dealt with fear and how are you helping other women? Because you must hear it all the time, like work through that initial fear of launching something new. Yeah, it's funny. I I never really think about that. But then someone um, said to me the other other day, um, Piera from Refiner29, I was actually talking to her. She's starting her new thing. But she was like, you generate so much. Like how? Yeah. And I think the reality is, is because I really believe in it. Mm. If I don't believe in something, you guys probably wouldn't hear about it. But because mm -hmm. I'm like, oh, we need this. The world needs this. Like, 
I become obsessive about it and I'm just like, go do figure it out. And the reality is, is like you have to just figure it out. And like there's so many ways. Like I think the best example of this is like Angeline and I, my co-founder of Cherub, went out. We like had the concept, had the idea. We went out for VC funding the week Silicon Valley Bank collapsed. Mm. We were like, oh, my God. (laughs) Yes. Brutal. So everyone's like, number one, we're not writing any checks. Number two, we're definitely not investing in like ideas. Like you need to have a product and like a million in revenue. We're like. What? <laughs> we literally strung together an alpha through an email list, through Bubble, through no code platforms. Like we figured it out. Wow. And from that, the million dollars was deployed to these different brands. Um, and off that, we were able to raise over a million dollars from angels ourselves. Mm-hmm. So like no is not an option. Like you have to keep going and figure it out. And like that's the risk you take. Right. But the risk and the bet is on you. You know, so I think you have to just push past it if you believe in it enough and don't talk yourself out of it. Like I'm a huge 80 percenter, like get Mm. it 80 percent, get it out the door. Like, don't sit and be like, well, should that comma be a semicolon? Because if it's a semicolon, like Mm -hmm. you can overthink to death. Mm -hmm. And the best founders and brands I know launched with abandonment kind of and said, let's see what happens. And I think that's kind of the best way to do it. Yeah, that's literally the only way I've ever gotten anything out and I think maybe as the stakes go up my fear has been like Mm. okay well what's the if I put this out there is there like a higher you know like risk with something else but it's still honestly as I'm verbally processing with you it's still the same because you'll never get it perfect because the 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 amount of data that you need from other people in order to do the next iteration. You need to get the feedback Mm -hmm. first. So, Mm -hmm. I mean, you can quiet launch stuff and see what happens and then go bigger. But like, I just think like you'll learn immediately what's needed. Mm -hmm. I think from the alpha that we built, like we learned that founders want beautiful data room so like you know the data room is where you host all of your you know documents assets for everything that Mm -hmm. you're doing when you're fundraising Mm -hmm. right now it's like an ugly link farm essentially that you get to and it looks like that we built these beautiful like investor tested data rooms we're calling them like Squarespace, like Mm -hmm. plug and play style and you can as a founder tell your story through video Mm -hmm. tell your story through these compelling stats like everything is merchandised beautifully which for cpg brands is like they're storytellers that's how you sell products Mm -hmm. so like why would your data room look like a bunch of links like Mm -hmm. tell the story you know Mm -hmm. get it out there so that was something we learned through launching that people Mm -hmm. were like i really want this and so we were able to build it based on that Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about the fundraising side because, Mm. you know, I think there's this misunderstanding about like when funding is necessary and what it can really do for you. And and for the most part, at least in my community, it is a lot of bootstrap businesses, which is beautiful. I've had that journey, too. You've done both. But when would someone know that it is the right time to consider taking Mm. outside money in terms of helping them grow? What is that sweet spot? Yeah. So the way I think about it is threefold. I think there's angel investment, which is a very different beast than venture capital. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to venture capital specifically, first of all, the market we're in is really, it's a really challenging time to raise money if you're early stage. Like early stage no longer exists. Like pre, they're like, oh, we're pre, pre-launch, pre um, you know, VC, we invest in early stage. They're like, do you have 2 million in revenue? And you're like, that's early stage? Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. when? Yeah. So right. this you're market like is, <laughs> is very rough. But basically what venture is looking for and for the most part and what you need to think about with your business is they want a 10x, time, sometimes more return on mm-hmm. their investment. So even I remember like someone talking to me about uh, venture with Crate and Cultivate, like this was a while ago, but she was like, you know, I was like, I just want to get to like 50 million in rev. And she was like, oh, like, don't say that in venture. You have to say, I have to get to, I want to get to like 500 million billion in revenue. You have to be like, we're going to be the global. And I literally was like, I don't want to do that. Yeah, like, yeah. I don't think that works or makes sense, but that's their mentality mm. is how can this be the biggest, most profitable, revenue driven, gigantic company like Uber. Mm -hmm. Like they want those game changing, life changing ideas and they don't care how you get there. But they're like, here's money to go figure it out. And it's kind of a bad Mm -hmm. system. Obviously, that doesn't sound smart. No, totally. Because like all the companies we know and love, Uber, Postmates, um, you know, DoorDash, Lyft, whatever, all these amazing companies bleed cash. They Mm -hmm. do not make money. Yeah. But Mm -hmm. they were given blank checks and said, go figure it out. Mm. Um, That doesn't really exist anymore. So now we're in this kind of, um, you know, macroeconomic environment where profitability matters. The business model matters. Like you really need to be able to be dialed into your vision and the, the revenue streams that you're looking to generate. So that's definitely part of it. I would say also like there is a lot of funds out there that 
are really great, you know, that are really supportive, are going to bring a lot of value to you. And typically, I would say those are boutique VC firms that are very specific. Like we only invest in um, like regenerative farming startups. Like we only invest mm. in, um, you know, education or, or um, femtech. Find those that fit your your mold or your messaging or whatever you're doing. And I would go after those if you are looking for venture because they are so dialed into mm -hmm. what they're looking for that that could be a, a yeah. much better experience than the blank check experience. I would say angel investing is and taking on angel investment or people call it friends and family is so valuable. It's really mm -hmm. about bringing people onto your cap table that have strategic value and that also are cutting you a check. Totally. And I think... When I would think about that is when you have a solid business that's doing well, but you need help getting to that next level. And you know that there's an unlock with a certain group of people mm -hmm. that could really make a difference. Like I kind of joke, like the angel investors we have in Cherub that have invested in us are like our best employees. Like they're the mm. biggest fans. And they're like, did you hear about this? Did you know this girl? I'm going to introduce you to this angel. Do you know that person? I'm like, do I need to pay you? Like, right. I'm so confused. Like, they right. are so invested mm. and passionate about the success of our business that they're invaluable. And yeah. they wrote us a check on top of it. That's mm. amazing. So I think for small business owners or, or people who are at that level, mm -hmm. like, especially if you're working as a solo founder and you're kind of just like cranking yeah. and you own 100 percent of your company, maybe consider bringing mm -hmm. on a strategic 10 angel investors mm -hmm. at 10K each or whatever it might be that can really help build and grow your business and take it to the next level. Um, so that's how I would sort of think about it, think about it. But I also would say like, you know, bootstrapping, create and cultivate was because we were aiming for an exit. So like owning the majority mm -hmm. equity was like the biggest thing that was on my mind and creating yep. the most profitable business quickly. Would I like do that again? Like in that way, bootstrapped? Probably not. Mm, it was really painful, but it was mm. early days. Like, you know, mm -hmm. really this whole venture world kind of blew up in the last five, six years. So, yeah, that's so good. And I don't hear enough women talking about that. The, exactly what you just broke down. Um, it was actually at one of Lori's events, her girlfriends in business events, Vina Jetty, who we love. She's an investor. And she basically said, like, if you're not thinking about at some point bringing in money to help you really scale, like you're not serious about scaling. And it just was I feel like more women talking about how how we can find the investors, how to think mm -hmm. about using that money and really stop. It's like breaking this mentality of thinking it, we have to all be self-made. Yeah, 100 percent. And also, like, if you don't want investors, that's fine, too. Yeah. Like, I, and if you don't want a 200 billion dollar business, that's fine, too. Yeah. Obviously, we need like more of those that are women owned. But I think it's like there's this misconception that like I need venture to be successful and you oh, don't. That's right. just not true. Right. But I think that's what the media really mm. paints. Mm. I love the strategic investor idea. I mean, even I can't tell you the amount of times like now just literally like two weeks from actually having product out in the world, the amount of people investors that I have talked to, just gotten strategy from, like that have helped me through like the hard times. I I actually can't imagine if I hadn't done it without them. There were moments where I was like, yeah. oh my God, why did I do this? <laughs> but they it far outweighs yeah. that with the I, help. I feel like people, you know, mentioned the way that you raised as well all the time, like really strategic female, like that's so smart, um, the way that you did that. And I think more women can learn from that. Oh my, it's, it's been life changing because yeah. honestly bringing people in and knowing that when you do launch, which your app is so incredible for this, I'm even like, well, do I want to do a second raise with those people? It's going to be great. Um, because do it is too. your megaphones. Yeah. 100%. Like they're just a bunch mm -hmm. of megaphones for them who can not only help them, but also be voices, yeah. which is incredible. And the beauty of Cherub that I'm so excited about is our investors are all over the country. Mm -hmm. Like they're not LA, New York. We have New Orleans, we have Texas, we have Chicago, we have Alabama, like Quiet angels are out there and they're smart and they're like one of our our angel investors and was on the platform. She's a startup lawyer. I'm like, who doesn't want her on her cap table? Like, right? come get over here. Yeah, no um, so kidding. Like, like, are you amazing. kidding? Like, yeah. Let's get her on. Yeah, <laughs> totally. <laughs> That's yeah. amazing. OK, so I want to go back to the create and cultivate thing um, quick because you get a second chance at you being the person you want to be in that company in a different way. So what 
changes have you made and how are you going to show up in this company? Like, what are you going to be doing? That yeah. feels good for so, you. So, well, first things first, I'm not the CEO. So okay. that's like a big one. <laughs> so like, thank God. God. I know, truly. So I'm the chief creative officer and obviously the founder. So Marina's taking on the CEO role. And basically, like, I want to do the things I love doing, which is thinking about the events, the creative, the stages, the talent, the programming, like all of those different things. I've also, obviously, I've hosted the podcast by myself for I mean, I don't even know, seven years. Mm. <laughs> it's like so insane. <laughs> and so now we'll be co-hosting it. And like, again, having so like fun. someone to do stuff with, I yeah. think is so, to such a different realm for me from being a solo founder for so long. Mm, yeah. um, so I'm excited. And, and you know, now I have two co-founders. I have my co-founder at Chair, my co-founder at Create and Cultivate. So it's mm. nice. I'm basically able to do my like best and highest work at both companies without having, you know, kind of the, the day-to-day stress of like being the CEO, you know, on that side of things. But also like be a you know sounding board for them as well do you think you could have done that right like from the beginning or do you think you had to almost like work yourself out of it or know that you didn't need to be ceo no there was i was so deeply integrated into the business mm. on every level and also probably like the world's biggest control freak of all time. I can't really. Well, I'm just like <laughs> pop, puppet mastering like a psycho yeah. in the background um, <laughs> that like someone had to physically remove me mm. from the office. Like, Can you please leave? Um, no, I think it was, I think I, I had to like there, everything happens for a reason. I'm a mm. huge believer in and I think there's no way I could have stepped back and brought someone in and truly taken a step back or co- at least come down from that like working high of mm. so many years running it it's hard to unlearn that yeah and i mm-hmm. and even now i catch myself being like okay, okay okay i don't have time for this i don't have time for lunch and i'm like nope walk your dog mm. go get lunch work mm. out like and i've i've told my co-founders like these are important this is important to me i have to date now like mm. what a nightmare oh my god <laughs> that's a whole other that's yeah, like starting no, another that's, company yeah, totally i know literally like help find my i know i was like the crane culture community rally your brothers like who is <laughs> wait we have matthew hussey <laughs> on today oh could just invite him back could have yep wait he's, who's he's, he's like the a, number one youtube dating perfect love advice. Look, put me in <laughs> he's taken but uh, he's, he's, taken the, he's gotta have some connections <laughs> i assumed he was like it's recent. Recent. no you're yes. married for a year so, <laughs> so well, let's, well, i'm like, no, I'm like uh, you said it i didn't <laughs> <laughs> no i'm no. like who who does the bachelorette casting like let's go mm, just great. <laughs> we've got to have we've got to have some context she said it here someone's now gonna get her on the bachelorette which no i know I who's listening it. oh my god how fun would that be i, I did I don't have a contact for that, but I do have a casting director for Love is Blind. <laughs> oh, my God. I don't think I could do it. Wait, <laughs> would you do a Bachelorette? I would totally do a Bachelorette. Like, in five seconds. Hollywood, call us. Hollywood, call me. I'm going to send this no. to Hollywood. No. I'm now, I'm, Hollywood. I was going to say, I'm now Hollywood. involving Hollywood. us in it. We'll be, like, the people you bring in when to you get vet. to, like, bring yes. in your friends. Yes. And, we get to, and we'll sit it's and us interview them. in the hot tub hanging out. <laughs> yes. like, you guys have to go talk to the guys. I'll be watching like, you guys while you're in the hot tub. I'm like, um, I don't think he's for you. <laughs> it's a no. It's a no. Oh, my God. I love that so much. This but, yeah, no, so love unhinged. is one. I'm the biggest fan. But I don't know. No, I, yeah, I, I don't that know. one would be tough. That, that would be, be tough. tough. That would be tough. Yeah. We're getting okay. our bachelorette. Great. This is so yeah, exciting. I mean, Number this one. Is amazing. Uh-huh. Okay. What are you most excited about right now? Yeah, I mean, I would say I'm really excited for South by Southwest, like Austin. I'm like, for anyone gonna, who doesn't know, tell people what. Yeah, South by Southwest so South is. by is like this gigantic festival that happens in the city of Austin, and it has different verticals. It has digital technology innovation, and then it has music, film all sorts of different like and they're week over week over week so it takes over the city for like a month and i i've gone every year and like creighton colty's always done something every year we're not we're doing a small influencer thing this year just because it was the timing was crazy but we're launching a pop-up shop for cherub mm, where you can't cool. buy anything but you can invest in everything so when Whoa, you walk in the shop it's so really cool smart. there's different products everywhere so think kayla gray like for instance like has this like beautiful display and you're like oh my god this perfume is like amazing and there's a qr code to go to her data room to get her top stats it doesn't give you all the information unless she opts in to like have you look and then um you can invest so wow. we have cool. so much programming we're doing like mixers uh we're doing a founder funder mixer with founder made conference we're doing dinner so i'm excited and like also like so excited to get it over with you know like that's how you probably feel about all your events too it's like it's like i cannot wait and i also cannot wait for the day after when i can yes. just chill totally yeah, yeah. it's equal it's it's equal. equal both is totally equal yeah mm-hmm. so with create and cultivate you want to be doing 
like events all over again. Is that yes. what that's going to yep. look like? So exactly. for everybody listening, how are they going to be able to be a part of that? So we're launching soon and we will have a lot of events this year, which we're really excited about. But our big one is going to be next summer. Um, so sign up for the newsletter. Follow us on Create Cultivate. All those I different things. I need to save the date now. Mm-hmm. I know. Mm-hmm. You'll be the first to know. Don't okay, worry. Great. Yeah. Great. We want to have a podcast stage, though. So. Oh, amazing. Done. So smart. Yeah. So smart. We love this for all of us. We yeah. know how to do that. <laughs> well, I'm so grateful for you. Is there anything else that you want to share with the audience? No, it's just been so fun, like hanging out with you guys and growing up together. I like, know. I feel like it's been years of podcasts and like watching what you guys have done. It's so awesome. And yeah, I'm just excited to be here. Uh, Let's go like, get some wine. so grateful for you. And, yeah, we are going to go get some wine. It's actually truly, happening. I just want to like... I want you to know how much just from all of our communities, how much you were the North Star for so many things. And you really Mm -hmm. are. I'm sure you hear hear it all the time, but maybe not. So you need to hear it again. Like truly a trailblazer that you just leap and you don't really understand what that's doing for all of us. Like it is full (laughs) permission for all of us. And you've always been so accessible for me, like so generous and so accessible. So, so grateful for you. And I'm just so excited for this. We're like, go girl, go. Cause we know we get to go if you go too. (laughs) Which is the coolest thing ever. So it's the best. Yeah. So grateful. So fun. Thanks ladies. See you on our next episodes.